Welcome to Key Tech. Please describe this channel if you are interested in today's video. The US is tightening its restrictions on Chinese chips, but lithography giant ASML has chosen a curve to save the country. On March 5, 2025, ASML's annual financial report contained a big news they are going to build a new maintenance center in Beijing. This decision is not an ordinary corporate layout. Behind it is a secret worth 36% of revenue, and it is also a wonderful contest between commercial interests and political games. Although ASML is now thriving in the Chinese market, their days are not easy. In 2024, ASML sold 10.195 billion euros of lithography equipment to customers in mainland China, accounting for 36.1% of the company's total revenue, directly sending China to the throne of the largest customer. You know, the contribution rate of the Chinese market in the first three quarters was even more exaggerated maintaining 49%, 49%, and 47% for three consecutive quarters until the fourth quarter when the United States strengthened its control and dropped to 27%. It can be said that if Chinese customers had not placed crazy orders, ESML's financial report data would not have been able to hold up its face. After all, the demand of traditional big customers such as South Korea and the United States is declining and Taiwan only contributes 15.4%. But the big stick of U.S. export control is always hanging over their heads. Starting from 2023, the Dutch government has been tightening the export policy of lithography machines under the pressure of the United States. Even immersion DUV lithography machines need a license to be sold to China. What's more, the United States also wants to cut off after-sales service and ask ASML to stop repairing equipment for Chinese customers. This made ASML very anxious they have sold more than 1,400 devices in China. If they cannot be repaired, they will not only face the risk of sky-high repurchase, but also the collapse of their business reputation. The CEO of Yangtze Memory has said, if you don't repair, you will repurchase. Under this pressure, ESML just quietly rented a maintenance point in each one. Beijing in 2023, and then decided to build a new building in 2025 to move the maintenance team and spare parts warehouse in. This maintenance center is not simple. It is the golden bell of ASML to deal with export controls. In the past, equipment had to be sent back to Europe and the United States for repair when something went wrong but now it can be fixed directly in China. They also set up a local procurement team to specifically solve the problem of parts banned by the United States. In ASML's own words, this is called reducing logistics time and environmental impact, but anyone with a discerning eye can see that this is circumventing the United States' long-arm jurisdiction. Foreign media directly called this a clever trick to bypass export controls. After all, as long as the spare parts used for repair do not contain American technology, the United States has no control. ASML dares to be so tough, and the confidence comes from the real money in the Chinese market. Look at their sales data. 374 of the 583 devices sold in 2024 are DUV lithography machines. 
These mid-range devices just match China's demand for expanding mature process wafer fabs. SMIC's four new plants have started construction, and Yangtze Memories capacity expansion has made China the country with the most wafer fabs under construction in the world. ASML knows that losing the Chinese market is equivalent to cutting one-third of its revenue, and no one can afford this price. A deeper sense of crisis comes from the breakthrough of China's lithography machines. Although ASML's annual report does not explicitly state it, industry insiders know that Shanghai Microelectronics 28 nanometers DUV lithography machine has entered the countdown for mass production, and EUV key technology is also breaking through. The establishment of ASML's Beijing Maintenance Center is, to some extent, positioning wall before the rise of Chinese technology consolidate customer relationships while it can still make money so as not to be kicked out by domestic substitution one day. Changes in the international situation have also emboldened ASML. Europe has recently been at odds with the United States over the Russia-Ukraine issue. The German Chancellor visited China with a business delegation and the French president called for strategic autonomy. Against this background, ASML chose to increase investment in China, which is in line with the EU's commercial interests and can please China, a super customer, which can be called a killing two birds with one stone business strategy. But then again, ESML's compromise is ultimately limited. They can repair old equipment but dare not sell new machines, and EUV lithography machines are still stuck and not loosened. If China's semiconductor industry wants to truly break through the blockade, it still has to rely on its own research and development. Just like the high numerical aperture EUV lithography machine worth 350 million euros, only ASML can make it in the world now. This kind of technological hegemony cannot be broken by building a maintenance center. But at least ASML's choice proves one thing. In the face of commercial interests, even the strictest political blockade will reveal flaws. The attractiveness of the Chinese market is rewriting the rules of the game for the global semiconductor industry.